I'm um, uh, uh, proud to uh, be welcomed back to the Texas Heart Institute for Fusion Conference again this year and want to thank everyone affiliated with the program who extended me that invitation. And before I get started with my presentation, I want to make certain uh, everyone is aware I have no declarations, no conflicts of interest, and no disclosures. The topic that I'm speaking on is the microbial world, essentially dust to dust. I invoke the uh, term dust to dust since it uh, is relevant to the soil microbiologists who were approached in the 1930s through the 50s to develop an a antibacterial agent that could treat tuberculosis. And they felt like if you wanted to understand the tuberculin bacilli, you had to go to where it lived in the soil. And uh, they felt like you would better understand the microorganism if you researched it in its world, as opposed to in a Petri dish of broth or what have you, or a test tube. Salmon Waxman was uh, one of the great scientist at Rutgers University who researched the uh, uh, soil bacteria for these various disciplines in science. He invoked the term Ecclesiastes uh, scripture that stated, the Lord hath created medicines out of the earth, and he that is wise will not abhor them. And Salmon Waxman went on to win the Nobel Prize in Medicine for the discovery of streptomycin, just so you know. And he wrote a wonderful book, if you haven't read it, My Life with the Microbes. It's a uh, fantastic read if you have an interest in the history of uh, the treatment of uh, microorganism. The title of his uh, poem here, A Speck of Dust, is at the end of the book. There's several verses but I uh, utilize the last verse, which reads, I am that speck from the beginning of time to the end of time, that tiny speck in eons of time, that flicker of light that has let, left its trace upon the course of life, the significance of which in this universe of time, it's still to be unraveled. And so that sets the tone for the uh, modern pandemic that we're in. There's much we don't know and much we still need to know. And I feel like this slide represents the mood of the nation today when you look at the devastating reality and our fallen heroes, both medical uh, professionals and our fellow citizens. And there's no hospital administration no uh, medical uh, staff, no uh, first responders that were prepared for what the scene is in the upper left where the uh, streets of Brooklyn right outside the hospital in New York were just congested with ambulances. And uh, if you look at the picture on the left, uh, sadly, 88 nurses that I know of have succumbed to the coronavirus. And I think the uh, image on the right where the healthcare providers are knelt in prayer, invoking all the arsenal that they have available to them uh, from the medical treatments and therapeutics to protection to prayer uh, in their battle against this uh, uh, horrible disease. 1.7 million today have been infected there are now we're now approaching 100,000 deaths and if you feel sometimes you don't have friends think again you have trillions although you also have trillions that uh potentially can harm you uh but our world is dominated by microbes the microbial cells on earth uh number around a nonillion outstripping the imagination of our minds and exceeding the estimated stars in the universe. They outnumber human cells 10 to one and make up around two pounds of our total weight. And if you look at the greater understanding we have today than when I took uh, 
microbiology, bacteriology, and all the life science courses, they understand the human virome today uh, much better. And these images, uh, the one on the left is an Impressionist art poster that shows us basically as a walking Petri dish with broth in our body or a test tube carrying all these uh, microorganisms that are both advantageous and disadvantageous to us. And we all know they live in, uh, in us and on us. They uh, live on the skin, in the blood, and then, of course, in our respiratory tract and gastrointestinal tract. And we're learning much more every day of the relevance in cardiac surgery and other uh, health care considerations about the gut and how important it is and related to the brain. We have the good, the bad, and the ugly. And there's no more impressionable a slide than the one on the right, the corona, corona alert with the uh, corona cells floating uh, in their space, their world, and the emphasis on PPE and protecting oneself. And then the bacteria, we have good and bad, and uh, we wouldn't have wine, cheese, or bread to enjoy if it wasn't for the good bacteria. And the human microbiome, and this slide on the right, it reveals numerous uh, uh, species of microorganisms that reside in our biome, in our uh, major organ systems. And then on the left, you see a slide emphasizing the microorganisms that can be both deleterious and beneficial to the human. We're presently in a state where I feel like we're transitioning from the uh, multi-decade focus of killing all bacteria with soaps, detergents, antibiotics, and hard sanitizer. How many times were you called to uh, the dinner table and first instructed to wash your hands? And then we try to uh, create a uh, environment where we feel like we're free of uh, microorganisms, and yet I'm not so sure that's the total direction to go. Some good, some bad, but we're shifting into maybe what might be a greater understanding of uh, this antibacterial obsession we've uh, encountered into a, a world where we understand more greatly the microbial ecosystem. And it is now linked to allergies, obesity, coronary artery disease. And so our, our microbial world, we have a lot of room and work to improve upon in terms of understanding. In life in a world without microbes was a question posed to uh, Louis Pasteur, and Louis Pasteur answered this uh, query, life would not long remain in the absence of microbes. And of course, uh, Nuttall and Thurfelder and others uh, wanted to try and prove him wrong with the notobiotic life and I call it that gut feeling. What happened is they proved that you could take guinea pigs and place them in a microorganism-free environment and they would survive. But yet, uh, there was a myriad of problems in mental health and uh, other interactions with the gut microbiome and neurophysiological health that manifested itself as a consequence of that environment. And it connects the dots between your uh, gut bacteria and the mood you're in. It influences how we feel, think, and uh, are we having a good day, bad day, or a good encounter, bad encounter, or whatever. And so the, the uh, area that I think we really need to gain more knowledge of is actually in the uh, gut. And I've done some studies on that in uh, cardiopulmonary bypass and cardiac surgery and the inflammatory processes that mediate because of the poor perfusion to the gut at times. So it's a very important topic. Then Leonhout discovered the microscope in 1675. He was a draper researching uh, threads, materials, dyes, and uh, other components that made up his vocational world. And 
one day out of curiosity after he had developed his microscope pictured on the right there and I have a replica of this microscope and I can't hardly see through it I don't know how he did he he observed uh, tiny bacteria uh, through this device so uh, it's just amazing what his eyes were able to see and then I invoke this slide into the presentation, innovation beyond the microscope, the tank respirator, or what you might more commonly know as the iron lung. Philip Drinker Sr. developed this system uh, utilizing an electric motor and two vacuum cleaners to control the pressure in an airtight environment for the purpose of treating uh, individuals afflicted with the polio virus more more prominently children but uh adults as well i had the uh experience with working with these uh systems in the 1970s and uh you you see emerson's improvement in the top left photograph of working with the uh iron lung it had window portals and uh things like this that could allow the healthcare professionals to interact with the patient while they were in there providing them comfort and care. And then he's pictured on the right uh, with his son, Phil Drinker Jr., who was very prominent working with Robert Bartlett to develop ECMO systems, developing a silicon uh, polymer membrane. And just for a brief borrow insight, 2,500 years experience, the plague of Athens uh, took the lives of 100,000 people. Thucydides wrote, the principal reaction of the people was fear and despair such that most of the in afflicted died in isolation, alone and uncared for. You strike alone and uncared for in today's pandemic and yet we hear quite a few prominent complaints from the public and understandably that they can't be with their loved one who is isolated and it makes an emotional impact on them. Looking at the Antoine smallpox pandemic and the plague of Justinian and Black Death Plague, millions and millions and hundreds of millions of people died in a period where uh, they didn't understand uh, the diseases, isolation, uh, they didn't have medications and so on and so forth. And if you look back in the history of humanity, Moses gave a great example in the Talmud uh, after the Exodus when uh, he probably could be considered the first public health official and uh, microbiologist because he taught his people how to live and live cleanly and freely. And then the first uh, human virus discovered was the yellow fever in 1901. It was confirmed in 1901, although Carlos Finlay uh, proposed the concept that a vector in the form of a mosquito was transmitting this virus to humans. And researchers at Columbia University Medical Center confirmed his uh, suspicion about 21 years later. And if you look at uh, hepatitis B, the oldest human virus, 1967, it was discovered. DNA extracted from a prehistoric human tooth revealed that hepatitis B has been infecting humans for at least 7,000 years or more, and it's the oldest human virus to be sequenced. And today, 800,000 people die annually, and there are 250 million infected with the virus today as we speak. And you see on the map on the left, this is where the discovery of all the oldest uh, uh, human uh, research sites took place in archaeology and isolated the virus in ancient bones. Our list just keeps growing and growing in the microbial world. You see the Marburg virus, Ebola, HIV, influenza, and all of us are familiar with uh, the SARS and MERS and H1N1, and it has impacted our profession greatly. And what I want to uh, uh, emphasize here, every generation of perfusionists understands their role, their place in time, in history. And uh, the fact of the matter is, these people today, the younger generation, 
are making their mark and they will never forget this experience. And you cannot uh, overemphasize the topic of transmission by either direct or indirect contact. Large droplet sprays measure about 100 microns and uh, carry enough sufficient momentum to deliver a direct hit on the respiratory mucosa. And if you look in the bottom left, you see the particle sizes that can A, be inhalable and enter the lungs, B, respirable, uh, penetrating deep into the lungs, and then uh, uh, the bottom uh, particle, uh, the one micron size, can penetrate all the way to the alveoli. So aerosols for the remainder of this presentation will be a great emphasis that I uh, emphasize in the control of these viral containing droplets and in relevant to uh, our present coronavirus, June Almeida actually discovered the coronavirus in 1964. She was a high school dropout at the age of 16, but went on to become one of the world's uh, greatest electron microscopic uh, examiners. And she described a round gray dot covered in tiny spokes and noted that the pegs formed a halo around the virus, much like the sun's corona. And how corona spread in a single restaurant before we learned to social distance. If you look at the table setting on the left, there's a yellow dot uh, with a red circle around it. That's the first known subject to infect anyone uh, in a public place, in a restaurant, and you see all the others that were infected. Uh, we can't forget Legionnaire's disease, non-tuberculin mycobacteria, all these other uh, vehicles of disease that uh, have affected us in our lifetime. And the heater cooler incident where non-tuberculin mycobacteria was uh, uh, exposed to patients undergoing cardiac surgery unknowingly and uh, in the exhaust system. So aerosolization is very important. PPE, uh, as far as the armature of safety and precautions is critical, but in periods where intubation, broncholavage, bronchoscopy, mechanical ventilation, exhaust gas, oxygenator exhaust gas, endotracheal suction, those are key periods where you're most predisposed to the risk of exposure to aerosol viral uh, microorganisms. And of course, transporting in a uh, setting of uh, whatever the case may be, in-house rotary, fixed wing, whatever. And then uh, quarantining hardware after deep cleaning for 30 days. So those periods are very critical for us to understand. And I want you to think about uh, this slide as I begin to conclude. COVID-19 around the world has experienced 966 patients placed on ECMO. In the United States, 380 with 51% survivors. Uh, that's pretty uh, impressive because ECMO at first was considered a uh, contraindication to use uh, for treatment of COVID-19 because a group in Japan had experienced aerosolization in their institution. And knowing what we now know, I don't think this coming Valentine's Day is going to be like uh, we've experienced in our life up to now. There's not going to be any hugs and kisses. There are going to be shields placed up. Um, our culture is going to transition to a new uh, uh, environmental uh, safety uh, program that uh, will probably decline kissing as a practice. You won't see uh, George Mendoza or Greta Friedman kissing in the streets of New York. He grabbed her thinking she was a military nurse. She was just a dental hygienist walking home and uh, he grabbed her and planted a great big kiss on her. It's the iconic image of the uh, Japanese surrender during World War II. And I don't want to get to the point where our famous artists have to place masks on such uh, figures like the Mona Lisa's of the future. 
And then that touchy feely thing we may want to rethink. Uh, Lala Given in 1929 wrote up a paper that uh, pervaded the message that hands are agents of bacterial transfer. And she promoted the concept of shaking hands like the Chinese did, put, putting their two hands together and motioning in gestures of welcome. Uh, kissing has been around since the uh, 14th and 15th century BC. Handshaking has been around at least since the uh, period of Homer in uh, the Iliad and the Odyssey, where he made numerous references to handshakes. And at this moment, this concludes my uh, microbial world presentation. And I look forward to any questions anyone may have in the future. And what I would like to do summing up is uh, recognize a dear friend of mine in memory of Sal Garrico. Sal was uh, at the Academy meeting this past year and I asked him point blank, how are you feeling? How are you doing? And man, he, he made me uh, impressed that he was feeling great. And we actually inducted him into uh, the American Academy as an honorary fellow this past year. He didn't know that, and we were going to surprise him at our next meeting. And uh, one thing Sal did emphasize to me, he was so thrilled that David Ott and uh, Michael Duncan, who are both retired now as surgeons from Texas Art, uh, reached out to him, carried him to lunch, and it just boosted his, uh, mor his morale and spirit very greatly. He told me he thought it was a wonderful experience. And then lastly, uh, how do I honor Terry Crane? Terry uh, made the impression on me of the great uh, instructor, teacher, engineer, and uh, safety expert that he is uh, from the very moment I met him. And I met him in 1981. Terry is pictured here with his wife, Marilyn, and of course his daughter, Jessica, who's a perfusionist in San Antonio, and her child with Dr. Cooey. I wish Terry all the best in his retirement. I hope he enjoys life to the fullest with all this great family. And uh, the other thing I want to say, Terry, don't you dare become absent from our profession. We still need you. You step back and come in anytime and share your wonderful uh, knowledge and life with us. Thank you.